Hi everyone. Uh, quick recap, we've already gone through some examples of how to do a series circuit and a parallel circuit on all these pages of the packet. Now we want to talk about a combination circuit. Okay, so looking at these on page five, six, and seven, I'm pretty sure those are the three pages that we're going to kind of work on here today. Looking at that bottom one, there's going to be a little uh, decision making we have to do. Okay, let me have you take a quick look up on here. Could you zoom in on this for me, please? When you look up on the board here, now we've got uh, this colored in set of wires where I've got my highest voltage going all the way to here, my lowest voltage going all the way to here, and then we've got an in-between voltage wire one more time. This is supposed to give us an indication that we've got a series circuit here. You've got red, green, and blue wires. Not that the wires' colors matter, but the, representing the energy in those wires. Okay. The other thing that we've got here is you'll notice that this 4 ohm resistor and this 4 ohm resistor have that red-green red green color differences. It's indicating that those two resistors are parallel to each other. So in this combination circuit, we're looking at a couple of resistors parallel to one another on the left side of this whole picture. And those happen to be in series with a third resistor on the right side of this picture. Okay, so that's how we're gonna go about looking at this. If we could take a quick look at the whole thing here now, I've got it set up where my two four ohm resistors are gonna be in it, each of their own rows. I've got the six ohm resistor in its own row. I want to evaluate the entire circuit again like we did before, okay? So if we dive right into this, um, what I want to take a look at to start with, okay, is how we're going to find this total resistance right in here, okay? Four ohms in parallel with four ohms. I kind of want to break it down into that piece first, okay? On the left side, okay, those two resistors in parallel are going to require us to, to take 1 over total resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. That looks like that's going to be 2 over 4. And now we're almost, to, we're almost there. The total resistance divided by 1, because I want to take the reciprocal here, it's been a while since we've just said that out loud, is going to be equal to 4 over 2, or 2 ohms on the left side of this circuit. In fact, let me put that in parentheses up here. I'm going to label this. Together, those make up two ohms of resistance. Okay? Now, if we take a look a little bit further, if that's the left side of this circuit, that's two ohms, notice that's in series with six ohms of resistance. Two ohms in series with six ohms. The nice thing about this now is if we consider those to be series with each other, now we can just add those two resistors together left side plus right side when they're in series, that's going to equal our total overall resistance for the entire circuit itself. Two plus six is gonna give us a total eight ohms of resistance. Okay, so that's the first important starting point there is recognizing how much total resistance this battery is gonna be pushing charge through. That battery is trying to push charge through the circuit and it's gonna to have to push through those eight ohms of resistance. Right. Now, from here, We've got one more piece of information that's given. Uh, we can look at this 24 volt battery and recognize that that is the total voltage of the entire circuit. So from there, I just wanna refresh your memory on one of these key equations that we've been using over and over again. Voltage equals current times resistance. All right. If we plug in some numbers to here now, we can say 24 volts equals current times 8 ohms of resistance, okay, that's going to allow us to get the total current coming out of the battery. If I divide both sides by 8 ohms, okay, I get my total current. Looks like it's going to be 3 amps of current. Okay, so we're just starting to whittle away at this. We've got our total resistance, total voltage, total current, now all figured out there. All right, if I can finish off that totals row, the next step I'm going to look at is power. To solve for power, if we could recall that equation also, power equals current times voltage. Okay, so if I plug in my current multiplied by my voltage, oh, I'm going to run out of space here, 3 amps times 24 volts. Okay, you might check your calculator with me here. Uh, it looks to me like that's going to come out to 72 watts. Double check that number for me, make sure that we've got that correct. All right.
So our board is taking shape. Our board is looking a little bit messy here, but uh, uh, we've got a lot done here at this point. So now the rest of this, we have to figure out uh, how do we continue on. Now, when we dealt with just a series circuit, we said, oh, well, when, the, when you have resistors in series, all those resistors have, this, have the same current. But if we were dealing with a parallel circuit, we'd say, oh, all those resistors have the same voltage across them. Here we've got this combination circuit where you've got a couple of resistors parallel to one another, and they happen to be in series with a third one. So now we've got to figure out what to do with this case. All right. So with that, I kind of want to focus my attention for the time being on current. Okay, what is this current doing? What's this three amps of current doing after it leaves the battery? So let me draw this in as three amps coming out of the battery, which we decided through our math that uh, we tend to agree that three amps is our total current here. Well, that three amps will make its way to this point right here, in which case it's gonna have to divide up, okay? Remember, three amps is um, the speed of charge, but it's also the movement of charge, right? We can kind of think about, I don't know, maybe think of three billion charges leaving the uh, positive terminal of your battery. Some of those three billion will be able to go up this direction. Some of those three billion will be able to go that direction, okay? What we want to do from there is follow a little bit further. I'm going to come back to this a little bit, but realize the current going into this resistor equals the current coming out, and we'll follow it to here. Same thing, current coming into this resistor will equal the current coming out of that resistor. But then I want you to remember what happens right here. From some lab work that we did, I think we were able to look at this and say, all right, those currents together add up to equal our three amps that came out of the battery, okay? What's gonna happen once those three amps split up? They have to come back together. And I think the next key step is recognizing that all three amps will end up going through that six ohm resistor. The total current is gonna go through here. Even though it divides up back here, the total three amp current goes through that resistor. And then finally it comes through this wire and back to your battery. Okay, so that's the, the path of, uh, of our current. So what does that do for us? As we start to evaluate this circuit here, we just identify how much current is going through the six ohm resistor. Wanna take that three amps of current and label it here as going through our six ohm resistor. So now that leaves us with uh, uh, another step that we can automatically jump into. Voltage equals current times resistance. When we know current going through a resistor, we can solve for the voltage across that resistor. It's right here in front of us. Three amps going through six ohms. If we multiply those together, looks like we should get 18 volts across that six ohm resistor. Right. Okay, so from there, we could fill in the power. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit, okay? I want to take some time to, while, while this is still fresh in our mind, figure out what can we do next, okay? Um, there are a couple ways we could go about this. Um, to me, the easiest method to start with is to look, come back and look at the current through these two resistors. All right, when we did some lab work and we measured current going through resistors in parallel, it seemed like that amount of current depended on how much resistance it had, okay? If we had unequal resistors, we'd look for the one maybe that had the higher resistance, and we'd say that would have the lowest current. Or the one that had the lowest resistance would have the highest current, more resistance, faster charges, okay? Well, what if we have equal resistors? I'd say that they both get the same amount of current going through them, but then we gotta decide, is it three amps going through here and three amps through here? Well, we gotta be careful. Let's back up a step. We said that when the three amps gets to this part of your circuit, it does have to divide up. And the one other thing I wanna remind you of is back when we uh, started with all of our lab work, the first page that we looked at, again, I wanna just hold this up, you can keep using this, okay? Is that current in a parallel circuit is gonna be represented by the sum of the current through the individual resistors adding up to the total current coming out of the battery. It still applies here, even though we've got a combination circuit, okay? A combination circuit, current through here plus current through here should add up to three, okay? But you're gonna get the same amount of current through each of those two resistors, okay? Anyways, so what we're looking at at this point now, uh, I'm hoping we're painting the right picture here for you where you can see one and a half amps will go through this resistor. The rest of those 
uh, the rest of that current one and a half amps will go through this resistor. Okay, so that's one method that we can look at. When you have identical resistors, they should each get an equal amount of current going through them, and yet they still have to add up to the three amps that came out of the battery. Okay, so we, we take a, a couple steps closer to the end result here. Notice you've got two of these three variables. Okay, voltage equals current times resistance. Again, we've got current, we've got resistance. We can figure out the voltage across that resistor. Okay, one and a half amps is moving through a four ohm resistor. Help me out with my math here again, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna come out to six volts across that resistor and six volts across that resistor. Again, what did I just do here? Current times resistance. One and a half amps times four ohms gives us that voltage. Okay, so going from here now, uh, we can fill in the powers. But again, before we do that, I wanna just make sure that we've, we've uh, um, got consistency with the lab work that we did and consistency with all of our rules here, okay? Um, if we did this a different method, we should still come out with the same results. So here's the other thought that I wanna take, uh, take away from this, is the reason why we colored in all these wires is to recognize that each wire has its own energy to it, okay? We call it voltage, but voltage is kind of an energy thing. If you recall, a 24 volt battery has a 24 volt terminal and it has a zero volt terminal okay that voltage difference is 24 volts okay well if we bother coloring in these wires that means that this entire wire here is 24 volts 24 volts 24 volts All the way up to we run into these resistors. Okay, 24 volts goes all the way up. This zero volts goes all the way up to here. Okay, what I'm wondering is can you take a minute, maybe hit pause, and see if you can figure out what's the voltage of that green wire? Okay, it's kind of in front of us right here. Okay, what is the voltage or the energy in that green wire? Okay, I'm gonna keep talking here, but you can hit pause on your video for just a second, and as soon as you're done, hit play again and uh, we'll, we'll kind of fill in that blank. Okay, I hope you took a minute to try that out. Basically my thought here is I wanna fill in what this voltage is of the green wire. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this and say, well, we know what the voltage difference is across that resistor. In fact, I wanted to hold up my voltmeter one more time so that you can remember so that you can remember that whenever we write down a voltage, okay, that means there's a voltage difference across that resistor. Okay? There's an 18 volt difference across the six ohm resistor we already decided here. Okay? So what that tells us is that this must be an 18 volt wire so that we can measure an 18 volt difference. Now, if that's true, and I believe it is, if that's true and that's believable, now we should also be able to use that same voltmeter and measure the voltage difference from red to green. Measure the voltage difference from red to green. You might pause one more second and take a look and see, can you figure out what that voltage difference should be? 24 volt red wire, 18 volt green wire. Your voltage difference is what always shows up on your voltmeter. Okay. 24 minus 18 should give us a six volt battery. If we look up here, same thing. Red to green, uh, green 24 minus 18 volts should give us a six volt, uh, excuse me, six volt difference across that resistor also. I realize it's a big mess here. You can go back and watch this a couple times, but uh, um, just take it a little step at a time and realize that we've got a couple different methods that allow this to kind of work out for us. Now, for these basic ones, Okay, where these are equal resistance, I would just start with the easiest method I can. Oh, they must get the same amount of current through each in that case. But there will be some more uh, advanced examples that we'll do later on where you might have to look at the voltage in each of these individual wires in order to kind of piece things together. Just want to start to introduce the strategies. Again, I'm not trying to overwhelm you with giving you too many options. Um, go back and watch the whole thing again and see if there's one method that you like better than the other. Do you like labeling the amount of voltage in every wire? Okay. 
day? Or do you like the idea of seeing that the current splits up equally through equal resistors and then comes back together? All right, let's finish this up with our last step. Okay, I think uh, if we wanted to take a look at the power of each of these, we're going to take current times voltage is equal to power. All right, I'll circle that in right here. Current times voltage, one and a half amps times six volts. Check my math with that. I'm pretty sure that comes out to nine watts. Six times one and a half, nine watts. And then 18 volts times three amps equals our new power here. Help me out with that. That's 54 volts, excuse me, 54 watts, pardon me. Okay, and I mentioned this in an earlier video. Uh, we should be able to look at all of those and determine that we did this correctly. 9 plus 9 plus 54. Check that math with me again. I'm pretty sure that adds up to 72. Okay, you can check that out. Anyways, that's our next example. Uh, I'll be sure to get on another one here soon. Uh, but for now, try out the last question on page 5, 6, and 7 from your packet. Thanks, guys. Good luck.